Welcome to the Alternative Products Podcast, the ultimate hub for counterculture enthusiasts and innovators. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, we've got you covered. So sit back, relax, and let's explore the world of alternative products together. All right, so here we are with another episode of the podcast. We have Cody and Ty from Mellow Fellow. Uh, what can you guys tell us about Mellow Fellow and your experience here at, at, at Alt Pro so far? Alt Pro Expo was the you know, the first expo that really took us in as home, and we you know we became a sponsor of the show. Uh, you know, as we were you know becoming a bigger brand. You know, we started off uh, you know six partners in a garage a couple years ago. Uh, you know, we started off making just the oil, and then we developed our own brand, which is Mellow Fellow. And uh, the, the show, the Alt Pro Expo, in particular, we felt was you know catering to the shops and the end consumer, and really focused in on those relationships. We're a company that's big on our relationships. We will always put people before profit and the consumer uh, first and everything. And we felt this show embodied our values as well. So the partnership with Alt Pro Expo was natural from the very first uh, introduction to Shalom who brought us in. And uh, we love sponsoring the show and we love being here. Most definitely. Well, we're happy to have you guys as sponsors. Uh, you said you started off making the oils uh, at first. Um, was that something that you guys were, were providing to other companies before the brand Mellow Fellow was started? Can you uh, elaborate on that? Uh, and how did you guys kind of transition to your own brand? Yeah, so uh, our CEO, JJ, uh, Dr. Gerard Coombs, okay. he uh, is a pharmacologist and uh, boy genius as far as all things cannabis. He started a lab uh, right. with our other founder, Benjamin Warner, both PhDs. Uh, with a very vast knowledge in uh, cannabis chemistry. And we made uh, the raw material of the, the leaders. We did conversions uh, from CBD to all the other Delta cannabinoids. And that's how we got our start. We sold to many other brands and we also white labeled for a lot of other brands first. So those are two legs of our business that are still behind the scenes that we operate for the rest of the industry. But we really wanted a brand that embodied uh, Mellow Fellow, uh, the academic culture, uh, the, all the brains behind it. And so Mellow Fellow became an extension of the lab and our manufacturing facility. Okay, and uh, was it mainly uh, just derivatives of the plant, cannabis plant that you were going after, or were you trying to implement um, other products within the industry as well? Um, and are you still trying to implement the new kind of uh, things that are, that are coming out within the industry? So we have a big emphasis on creating different desired effects within our products. Okay. We're not after the slap you up, knock you out products. We want to create a tailored experience that gives you a more, a more of a clarity high, more of a dream high, you know, to deduce uh, REMs that we want to make our cannabinoids have an entourage effect, so we blend a lot of different rare cannabinoids together based off of data that we have um, on how it affects your endocannabinoid system. And that's, you know, JJ's, his approach has been to blend these cannabinoids together to elicit a certain effect that you want, that the user wants. Hey, I want a more energetic high. Well, here's the cannabinoids that we know actually give you energy. Yeah, and you so what we did is try to recreate yeah. the, you know, the indica or sativa but effects of the plant, but and we've done it in a beautiful way within our disposables, our edibles, and our other products by mixing together different ratios of the oil. And that's what's really pushed Mellow Fellow to the front of the herd as far as brands when we got a very late start. Awesome, awesome. And you mentioned something about R R um, REM sleep. And uh, are you saying, like, did, does your products uh, have an effect on the dreams that you have? Um, are you going to remember your dreams? Because I know uh, just with, 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 you know, when you smoke, when you're smoking just regular marijuana, it does take away from, from your ability to remember your dreams. Does that have uh, have an effect on it when you mention REM well, sleep or? Well, just Delta 8 in its own, which is the main cannabinoid used in this hemp side of the industry, does have, uh, does is shown to uh, induce REM sleep at, uh, at deeper levels. So increasing the quality of sleep. Okay. Uh, so there are a lot of studies that suggest that. Yeah. Uh, so that's where that comes from. Right and specifically tailored to producing that effect. Okay, and uh, so it does allow you to remember the dreams or it, it still will have that effect as far as it's gonna be difficult for you to remember your dreams if you're taking the product. You know, um, I, I can't speak to every user. Right. You know, that dreams are so unique. Yes, yes. And it's such a like, subjective and it's, yeah, experience every, yeah, that everyone has on their own. Differently, right? But, I mean, and everyone's endocannabinoid system is particularly 
in its own way. So what may work for someone may not work for others. Uh, my, my, my business partner, Lindsay, she's, uh, she's maybe 100 pounds soaking wet and I'm, I'm 230 and she can eat 500 milligrams of this no problem and I eat five and I'm out for two days. So oh, wow. everyone's unique, everyone's body is so unique. You Most know? definitely. The, you know, the way it's, the, you know, I, I also, you know, suggest it too as an analogy is, you know, some people, you know, might like tequila, some people might like beer, you know, each strain is going to have its own unique effect. Um, and uh, what, what, what can you say about, about the, the, the products and, and uh, kind of what benefits uh, do they have for, for the people and, and the products that we have here specifically, um, what, what are we uh, showing to, the, to, uh, to our audience? So what you got right here is we have the uh, four gram uh, disposable, our live resin line, and we also have our two gram as well. Okay. Um, and you know, what I can speak on Mellow Fellow is like, you know, what, what, you, what you see is what you get. Okay. I mean, like that's truly like with Mellow Fellow as far as like the cannabinoid breakdown. Awesome. And, and where are you guys uh, located? Where are you guys based out of? We're based out of Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Awesome. I'm a Miami guy, so. I'm, oh really? Uh, yeah, I'm, come by. Come check I'm the facility out, man. <laughs> right, right now I'm in Medellin. I'm based in Medellin, okay. but but I'm ba I'm back and forth. So you most likely oh, will we'll definitely I'll definitely Please. be over there. Uh, we're gonna be in Miami early early next year also. Um, so that's gonna be good. Um, so. Talk about some of the regulations. Uh, I'm not sure if Co Cody wants to, to jump in on this or Ty. Uh, some of the regulations that you guys guys had to face along the years um, as a brand, and, and how are you staying ahead of the curve uh, with those? Cody can speak on that. Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, we take pride in in working with the regulatory bodies um, in different states and federal being federally compliant. You know, we test every single batch, every product to make sure it is compliant in the market. Mellow Fellow wants to stay ahead of the curve and not only being compliant, but setting, you know, safe guidelines for consumption in the market. Yeah. We're big believers that, you know, right now, the, one of the hottest trends is 10,000 milligrams in an edible piece or a bag. And we don't believe that that's necessarily healthy, so we've limited our dosage, you know, because if a kid gets a hold of that one piece, he goes to the hospital, you know, versus you know, the damage is much reduced if the, the, the dosage is less. Um, that, that being said, you know, we were in Colorado when they changed their Delta 8 regulations and we had to move our entire operation to Fort Lauderdale. And that was a blessing for our company. Florida is much more receptive to the Delta cannabinoid research and production. Uh, and it's really allowed us to have a voice in setting those regulations to making sure that this industry has a sustainable future. Of course. And for us, you know, we're not in this for a quick make a, make a few dollars and get out. We want to see this industry push forward because these products, we really see giving people the relief they need on their day to day. People don't just smoke, you know, out of, you know, out of just people, you know, there's a common misconception that, oh, they're stoners or they're lazy. People are using these products to get through their day and to enjoy their off time and to get the pain, re the pain relief that they need uh, specifically for their products. So for us, uh, you know, helping having a voice in that is important but it's also important for us to contribute because like as i said you know before jj you know uh he's our ceo he has the academic background to guide those conversations and if he doesn't know it he's going to go and work within his academic network and be out. able to contribute yeah. uh the research <laughs> the research that uh that that we need to actually critique it with uh with the knowledge backing it you know right now a lot of these laws and regulations were made uh, with no scientific understanding um, or very little and yeah. so now that we have a platform us as a company you know we're able to be the voice uh, you know and be able to stand up to some of these uh, other regulatory bodies who are trying to say no hemp products allowed when we know that these have serious medicinal benefit yeah and we're, and we're, and we're one of those companies that will you know We'll go to the state if there is other issues, and we'll be compliant. We want to do everything that takes. You know, we want to be those people. We, we want to set the standard. I mean, we want to make you know, like, we want to make everybody appreciate and respect this industry, right? Yeah. And that, that's that's what we're trying to lead by doing that. Oh, so yeah. So, so speaking on on, on on the regulations of the pro of the product, uh, the different markets that you guys go into, how, how do you go about uh, ensuring that you're following those regulations, and and what kind of team do you have helping you uh, make 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 these things things happen? Yeah. So. We have a few internal people that that make sure that we're compliant in every state, um, and our compliance officer makes sure that we're compliant uh, federally. Okay. Um, we're able to manufacture these products, and you know, um, within the guidelines of each state, you know, some have lower dosages for edibles, uh, and 
you know, every product that you see from Mellow Fellow is what is what is it marketed on the packaging. Uh, our COAs, we batch test everything within our lab. We're big on pushing this industry forward um, and making sure it's, it has a sustainable future with the credibility of what's in the product is actually what's stated on the COA. Uh, our, C, our CEO, JJ Coombs, uh, you know, he's formulated a lot of these products to be compliant, but also very effective within uh, within each state's requirements. Um, you know, being adaptable uh, has has been what's pushed our brand forward, and being able to push it into different markets. Um, you know, some some markets really only allow HHC, um, and we're gonna we're gonna tailor our product assortment for that state towards that. Um, as far as you know, each state and regulatory body. You know, right now we faced a lot of opposition from big cannabis, and JJ has uh, had a voice in a lot of the hearings and as, for, as representative for our company, which is very important to have an academic in the cannabis in the cannabis field speaking on behalf of our industry, uh, particularly because a lot of the regulations weren't, si- weren't backed by science. Okay. So now, you know, as each state, you know, comes up, the, you know, should this be legal, should this not, we're able to tailor the conversation to make sure that these products stick around, uh, the industry is respected, and to making sure that these products are safe and consumable for everybody and um, we're just being smart about how you know we put these into the market right and as far as um, you know the servings uh, as far as how much goes into to each serving um, what's the thought process behind that uh, that, that mellow fellow is following so the thought process is you know we're not here just to get you slapped up or knocked out or messed up out of your mind uh, we have you know a responsible dosage within our products the blends that you see in all of our different products are designed to give you a special effect. Okay. Whether that be, hey, we're going for a dream blend to, to you know try to induce you know our more REM sleep, or whether they're going for a charged blend, which, which gives you a little bit more energy, or a clarity blend, which gives you a little bit more of a focus time. We're able to take the clinical data uh, of the, the cannabinoids, okay. uh, you know, and saying, hey, this proportion of these minor cannabinoids mixed together is going to give this user this high based on the data. Each each user has a unique endocannabinoid system, so it's not always going to be the same user to user, but generally speaking, we can say that, hey, this is the effect we're trying to give you with this product. So, you know, within regard to that, though, you know, a lot of people right now, the trend is higher dosages in our edibles to sell more or to give you a better bargain. And we won't go over a certain amount of threshold and we welcome the regulations and we, uh, for for responsible dosing of the products, uh, not just from the safety standpoint, but also from the business standpoint of, we wanna see that in consumer. We don't wanna sell them a product and then not see them for four to six weeks. We wanna see that consumer, you know, have them come in the shop, see us, see what, you know, see what the new products are and also have that educational basis too. So um, being responsible with those dosages in all different products is what's gonna make this industry not a one to two or three year cash grab. It's what's gonna make it a 30 year industry, 30, 40, that, you know, we can have, you know, generational wealth and, and have a family business ran on quality, which is what I think we're all here for. Yeah, we're awesome. here for the long run, right? We're here for the long run. That's, I feel like that's what we're here for. And I mean, that's what, again, Mellow Fellow takes like head on is just making sure that, uh, you know, really setting a standard, honestly, of just doing it the correct way and uh, find, you know, following all the rules and regulations and everything along those lines, you know what I mean? So For sure, yeah. for sure. And uh, you mentioned that, uh, you know, it, it brings the customer in more more frequently and and that i'm sure that helps on creating uh, a a better business relationship between you and the consumer as well um to speak on uh basically you guys came from colorado you said is it originally and then you moved to to fort lauderdale is that is that correct that is correct okay and just on that basis alone uh was colorado already uh um um legal Legal, legalized uh, recreational marijuana at that point when you guys made that move, and was did that have something to do with making the move? Yes. Okay. Colorado uh, has a very, you know, it was I, th- I think it was the first recreational market. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of any state, very strong foundation in recreational cannabis. Made a lot of progress there, but the people in Colorado, uh, you know, imagine you spent all this money on a license to have one brick and mortar location, uh, you know, in. With, without you know the backing of a, a bank loan or anything like that. So a lot of them were personally financed. So a lot of lobbying money went to go to stop the hemp industry initially. Um, and From uh, the, can- the re- yes, um, legalized yes. cannabis, from, recreational cannabis industry itself. Yes, okay. yes. And there wasn't much of a hearing for 
the hemp industry uh, the side of things where and they kind of pushed us out because they they felt threatened and rightfully so we can do a conversion and make a, a liter of delta 9 at a fraction of a cost that they can do using traditional extraction methods and the product could be nearly identical and or even better superior product so knowing that you know um, and knowing that we didn't have to have the kind of licensing that they did uh colorado banned uh or colorado uh, uh i don't want to say ban but colorado uh they they weren't favorable towards yeah, they frowned favorable upon. they frowned upon the hemp industries and sent out some notices okay to us so we found it was best to go to florida where the industry is supported uh and i know and cannabinoid research uh and manufacturing is you know more prominent understood and, and i i would i would think um in these markets where uh, cannabis is already regulated and, it, and it's, it's legalized for recreational purposes, um, it, it makes the, the derivatives side of, uh, of the plant, you know, less popular than, let's say, we're here in Dallas and we know the laws here are a lot kind of stricter. There's a lot more restrictions on, on what people can sell here. Is that correct? Would you agree with that statement or, or what would you be able to add to that? I mean, I think there's a plus side to both industries, right? I think there's benefits from both sides. Uh, I think that, you know, the issue was, you know, as bad as it sounds, it was the money issue. And, you know, some of these states where they're like how Cody said, like, oh, we're paying for licenses. Oh, we're getting taxed so much from the recreational market. So, like he said, you know, the hemp market came in and, you know, was going to really, it really was going to affect it. Um, but the thing is, there, there's, uh, there's, there's pros to both sides, you know, like, I know a lot of people, you know, I believe that we're going to start going towards Colorado ourselves now. Um, you know, yeah. we just got some information that now we can go back with him, correct? So we're going to go back, we're going to start building out that area. And it's like, you know, people are like, well, there's already recreation out there. There is. But, you know, some of these, like, especially these blends, and when you do it the way that we've done it, you know, you, you, some of the, high, you know, it's not as intense. It cut, it's a cutoff. You know, it, you know, people don't always want to go and just get destroyed, right? Like, yeah. they really do want to sometimes enjoy that high, be clear high, and still be able to get throughout their day or just hit this and be, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. a lot of these, you know unique cannabinoids when you blend them together that's what you get from that yes yes so that makes sense so you're you're, you're gonna get yourself back into those markets as well um, do you have plans to, to to get into the recreational side of, of, of the cannabis and uh, offer those those products in the recreational side yes we do yes okay we'll leave it at that looks like big plans a lot of big plans uh, yes the uh, we're, we're getting into those markets uh, we are very excited to be in a, in, a, in a very synergistic relationship with the recreational market and the hemp industry. The states that are going to allow both, I think are going to see the best results for their end consumers. Yes. Uh, I think, you know, there's things that the recreational market does better than us. And I think that we do some things better than them. And I think once you combine the two, yeah. you're ultimately going to service the end consumer in a safer and more effective way. And I'm very excited for our future in it. We're going to be launching Mellow Fellow in a few different bar markets uh, awesome. before the end of the year. Yes. And uh, we continue to hope to continue to expand and diversify our portfolio of a brand as well. Awesome. And uh, speaking on some of the new, some of the other products that you plan on bringing out, and some of the different products that you already have uh, out in the market, um, do you have other other things that you want to um, announce to to our audience? Um, any any plans for the near future that you guys want to bring bring up? Yeah, you want sure. to hold off on that? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, <laughs> so recently uh, we launched Relief Kratom. Uh, we launched our own uh, Kratom shots and gummies. Uh, so we launched those two weeks ago. It's been a very strong response in the market yes. with our own take on the Kratom. Uh, and we'll be launching Nice Nicotine uh, two weeks after the Champ Show. Awesome. And so our own, we're getting into the nicotine markets. Yep. Coming as to well. a store near you. Coming to a store near you. <laughs> there it so, is. So, you know, we want to diversify and put the academic minds that we have behind Nello Fellow to work in these other categories. And so we're specifically engineering uh, a lot of these other products to, you know, service all the needs of the smoke shop. Yep. Uh, we'll be in, uh, entering a few different categories as well. We've taken on master distributorship of a few other brands, cookies, uh, shrooms, which is Amanita muscaria mushrooms. And uh, we're going to continue to further, you know, push, uh, you know, our, our, uh, our products into the door because we know that the 
We know that right now we're, we've got an amazing portfolio of brands and we were doing it the sustainable right way and a lot of our customers trust us yes. because we do good business yes, and we always take care of them to put people before profit and, and products first. Um, never never spare an expense on making a quality product and the, the consumers will follow. So yes, that's how we built our business model and we're going to continue to uh, do what we've been doing and just building up the Mellow Fellow family. Yep. There it is. Ty, do you have any other uh, closing remarks for the, for the people? Uh, I mean, not really. I mean, other than, you know, we... Uh, we, you know, you cater to the people, and I feel like that's what we do at Mellow Fellow. It's, you know, you cater to the consumer, um, and you'll always be okay. And, you know, something else that we do really well that Cody's already touched on is just, like, uh, this industry is very fast, and you have to pivot very quick. And uh, that's something that Mellow Fellow will always and continue to do is pivot, and uh, we'll, we'll be first to market with things. So, There you have it. That's another episode in for the podcast. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Stay mellow. Stay mellow. Yes, yes. As the industry continues to evolve, so will we, bringing you the latest trends, innovations, and stories from the front lines. Don't forget to share this podcast with your friends, family, and industry peers to help us spread the word and continue to grow this community. Thank you for being a part of the Alternative Products Podcast.